Hello, hello, everybody. Hey, I love you so much. I, I just, uh, I'm excited about what we're learning and excited about learning more about Joseph. He is one of my favorites. So we saw yesterday that he's not only brave and courageous after he's sold into slavery and he's just such a wonderful worker and servant for Potiphar. Even when he's falsely accused for something he didn't do and he goes to prison, we're going to see how he handles prison today. So go to Genesis chapter 39 and verse, let's pick up again at uh, verse 20. <clears throat> so Potiphar, he took Joseph and threw him into prison where the king's prisoners were held and there he remained. But the Lord was with Joseph. Isn't that awesome? It said that he, the Lord was with Joseph when he was sold into slavery, and then when he was put in prison, did God leave him? No. And this is just a good reminder that God will never ever leave you either, no matter where you're at, and when you're in good places, and when you're in places that are hard, because you know prison's going to be hard. How do you think he's going to behave in prison? Let's find out. So the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. Gosh, I love that. God always loves you. Faithful means that it's always, it's a sure thing. God is going to be faithful to you. He loves you no matter what. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, God loves you. But he's so happy with you when you learn that he loves you and that you uh, choose to obey him and to be courageous men and women of God. But <clears throat> anyway, God's awesome. He loves you so much. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Now, how funny is that? He made him a favorite with Potiphar. And now he is making him a favorite with the prison warden. So we know that Joseph didn't get mad or angry or bitter. He didn't become a mean person that nobody wanted to be around. He must have been the most loving, kind, and obedient of all the prisoners. So much so that he became the favorite of the prison warden. That means the guy who's in charge of the prison. Before long... The warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. Isn't that hilarious? That's what Potiphar did. So God's just showing you, even when you're in a hard place, if you just believe that God is with you and you just keep on doing the right thing, you can be successful and prosper even in hard places and hard times. So now Joseph is in charge of the prison. He's still a prisoner, but he has made him in charge. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. So once again, when God blesses us, he blesses the people around us. So even in prison, Joseph's presence changed the presence, you know, changed the prison. So we can change the, the, the atmosphere of wherever we're at when we're full of love and light and full of God. He's going to use us. Now, remember that Joseph had dreams <clears throat> that, that were from God. God's going to use dreams again in Joseph's life. Look at chapter 40, verse 1. Sometime later, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer and chief baker offended their royal master. Somehow they did something that ticked the Pharaoh off. And Pharaoh became angry with these two officials, and he put them in the prison where Joseph was, in the palace of the captain of the guard. They remained in prison for quite some time, and the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph who looked after them. While they were in prison, 
Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker each had a dream one night, and each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph saw them the next morning, he noticed that they both looked upset. Why do you look so worried today, he asked them. And they replied, we both had dreams last night, but no one can tell us what they mean. Interpreting dreams is God's business, Joseph replied. Go ahead and tell me your dreams. So Joseph didn't act like he was all proud that he could understand dreams. He didn't say, oh, I understand dreams. No, he was very humble. He knows that those dreams come from God and God will give the interpretation. So he gave God the glory, didn't he? But he did ask them what they dreamed in case God wanted to use him. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream first. In my dream, he said, I saw a grapevine in front of me. The vine had three branches that began to bud and blossom, and soon it produced clusters of ripe grapes. I was holding Pharaoh's wine cup in my hand, so I took a cluster of grapes and squeezed the juice into the cup. Then I placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. God told Joseph what the dream meant. In verse 12, this is what Joseph says. This is what the dream means, Joseph said. The three branches represent three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift you up and restore you to your position as his chief cupbearer. And please remember me and do me a favor when things go well for you. Mention me to the Pharaoh so he might let me out of this place. For I was kidnapped from my homeland and the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. So Joseph uses this opportunity to ask him to speak to Pharaoh about his situation. Then look in verse 16. When the chief baker saw that Joseph had given the first dream such a positive interpretation, he said to Joseph, I had a dream too. In my dream were three baskets of white pastry stacked on my head. The top basket contained all kinds of pastries for Pharaoh, but the birds came and ate them from the basket on my head. And Joseph once again knew what the meaning was. He got the meaning from God. This is what the dream means, Joseph told him. The three baskets also represent three days. Three days from now, Pharaoh will lift you up and impale your body on a pole. That means he's going to stick a pole through his body. Then the birds will come and peck away at your flesh. Isn't that gross? It's awful. So Pharaoh is going to have the baker killed. Verse 20. Pharaoh's birthday came three days later, and he prepared a banquet for all his officials and staff, and he summoned his chief cupbearer and chief baker to join the other officials. He then restored the chief cupbearer to his former position. He gave him his job back and got him out of prison. So he could again hand Pharaoh his cup. But Pharaoh impaled the chief baker, just as Joseph had predicted when he interpreted his dream. Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. Isn't that so sad? He forgot about him, so he didn't say anything to Joseph, I mean to Pharaoh about Joseph. But we know that God is still with Joseph, and he's not dependent upon that cupbearer. But still yet, how disappointing that had to be for Joseph not to be rescued out of prison. So you know he's going to have to stay in prison and continue to be courageous, isn't he? All right, guys, you continue to be courageous, too. I love you. Bye.